Okay, so good morning everyone and welcome to um, the second in our series of uh, workshops on SARS coronavirus 2 and Corona Verde. My name is Anna Maria Niewiedomska and I'm a bioinformatics analyst and the outreach coordinator for the virus pathogen resource and uh, the influenza resource database at uh, JCVI. And I'm here today with my co-host Yun Zhang, senior bioinformatics analyst and the previous outreach coordinator for Viper um, to talk to you about the tools that we have available for comparative genomics analysis of SARS-CoV-2 and Corona Verde. Last month we talked about genomes and annotation, and as I mentioned today we'll talk about comparative genomics. We also have a few other webinars uh, scheduled for the next few months. If you're interested in some any of these other topics, please uh, go ahead and register if you haven't already. In the next couple weeks, on the 15th and on the beginning of October, we're going to have two sessions demoing our SARS coronavirus 2 assembly and annotation pipeline for next gen sequencing of SARS coronavirus 2 genomes. Um, and this aims to be a one step process that helps people who aren't really experts in uh, next gen sequencing data analysis to just assemble, annotate, and look for uh, variation in their SARS-CoV-2 genomes uh, in one step. Uh, we were planning to talk about phylogenetics as well today, but in the interest of time, we've decided uh, to dedicate uh, an entire session just to the phylogenetics of Corona Verde uh, on its own, and we've scheduled a new uh, session to do that on October 20th. And if you'd like to register for that, you can find uh, the link on our website or um, on our Twitter feed or Facebook pages. On Tuesday, the November 3rd, my colleague Zach will talk to you about host response omics data for Corona Verde. And in December, we plan to have another webinar on uh, Corona Verde ortholog group prediction, which my colleague Christian has been working on. Um, and if you have any particular interests or if there's a topic that we're not covering that you'd really like to see us cover, please do go ahead and email us because we are constantly changing uh, the workshops and webinars that we give to respond to the needs of the research community. So just a couple of logistical issues before uh, I get started. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd like you to ask them uh, either in the Q&A box or if you'd prefer to ask them directly, you can raise your hand and I will unmute your microphone uh, in the questions section. The structure of today's talk will be a brief introduction and walkthrough of the tools that we have available on Viper for comparative genomics, and we'll stop for a short Q&A. And after that, uh, for those of you who have already started with the tutorial, I will then uh, walk through uh, the tutorial exercises with you and uh, we can compare whether we got the same results. And in any remaining time, you know, we'd be happy to answer any other questions that you might have. And just as a quick disclaimer, this webinar is being recorded and it will be available shortly after uh, this talk on our YouTube channel. As a quick reminder, both Viper and IRD, the Influenza Research Center, are two of the six bioinformatics research centers that uh, are funded by the NIAID. And uh, their purpose is to study disease-causing pathogens of importance to humans. Um, and what we do is we focus on viruses um, in the Virus Pathogen Resource Center, and we also have a website dedicated to influenza research. And as part of our mission, we also try to respond to pandemic outbreaks. And as such, we have uh, created a dedicated SARS coronavirus 2 page on our website where you can uh, search through the available data. Uh, and there's many different options, genomes, genes, uh, epitopes, protein structures. You can also analyze and visualize your, your data in multiple different ways 
in tools specifically geared towards SARS-CoV-2 analysis. And we also provide a workbench for you where you can uh, save your either your own data or the data that you've searched in Viper or any of the an analysis that you've done using our tools. And of course, this is a private workbench unless you choose to share it with your colleagues and collaborators, which is quite handy now that everyone is working uh, remotely. So the goals of this webinar are just to give you a general overview of the tools that we have available. Uh, I plan to show you how to just run a basic multiple sequence alignment, uh, how to visualize it using our MSA viewer tool, uh, how to look for sequence variation using our uh, traditional sequence variation SNP analysis tool, how to use another type of uh, sequence variation tool based on uh, metadata associated with your sequences called MetaCats. And finally, I'll just run you through um, how to use our short uh, peptide motif search tool. As I mentioned, we have a lot of different tools available for SARS-CoV-2 analysis, including traditional bioinformatics. And last month, I showed you how to use our Vigor4 tool for genome annotation. But today, I'll focus on comparative genomics. And in the next sessions, we'll discuss phylogenetics, as well as the comprehensive pipeline for SARS-CoV-2 uh, genome assembly and annotation. So I'm going to get started using um, showing you how to use our multiple sequence alignment tool. This uses muscle, which is an iterative process to align your sequences or genomes. And then we also, um, we also allow you to visualize your alignment directly on our website using our MSA viewer, which is based on a program called PhiloXML. And this is really nice because it's, you don't have to download your alignment and view it in a separate program, but you can view it directly on our uh, website. And there's multiple different options that you can customize to change the view. Um, and and um, I'll show you that later. For variation analysis, we have a couple different tools. As I mentioned, we have the traditional sequence uh, variation analysis tool. And we also have our metadata-driven comparative analysis tool, or MetaCATS for short. And this is really useful if you'd like to uh, look for significant differences in terms of sequence variation or look for whether amino acids have changed either over time or whether there are differences between um, certain strains that are in one species versus another or uh, coming from one country or another. And you can group your sequences based on the metadata provided with the sequences and uh, look for differences there. And finally, I will also run you through uh, our short peptide search in proteins, where you can uh, look for short amino acid strings in a given set of sequences. Um, and you might say, well, can't I do the same thing with blasts? But one of the nice things that we have in this tool is that it also allows for fuzzy matching. So you're not, you don't have to look for exactly the same sequence. And it can also perform pattern matching. So it can look for certain patterns of amino acids um, in between random amino acids. And before I move on to the live demo, I just want to remind you that uh, we're constantly working to improve our tools that are available to the research community um, so that we can respond to this outbreak. And as such, we have developed, um, like I said, our SARS-CoV-2 comprehensive uh, assembly pipeline, which I'll be demoing to you in a couple of weeks. And we're working on strict ortholog grouping of all the coronavirus uh, protein groups based on um, based on protein structure and protein domains, which will help standardize the annotation and define the function of proteins. And we're going to translate that also into making um, a beta coronavirus uh, database for standardizing the annotation of beta coronaviruses, which will really help with, uh, for those of you who are working on comparative analysis of the coronaviridae. So again, this is just a quick summary of the different workshops that we have available for the next uh, few months. If you haven't signed up and you're interested in any of these, please feel free to do so. 
And just to remind you that if you have any questions or problems with the website, uh, we usually try to be pretty responsive. You can go to uh, the support button and either report a problem if you're having a technical problem or ask a question just if you want some help with how to use a certain tool or how to perform a certain analysis. We also have uh, a lot of documentation in terms of a help manual, tutorials, frequently asked questions, and um, we also do provide uh, web training if you'd like to request web training for uh, your group or you, you and several other people in your institute have uh, an interest in um, a certain topic or a certain area, uh, we can provide customized web training based on your needs if you just let us know. So with that, um, I'm going to check for any questions before I move on to the live demo. Okay, so to go to the Viper website, you would just go to viperbrc.org. Um, you can click on Corona Verde if you're interested in all the Corona Verde or uh, SARS-CoV-2 if you're just interested in SARS coronavirus. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just show you how to perform a basic uh, multiple sequence alignment, how to view it, and from there we'll move on to um, looking at variation in your multiple sequence alignment. So um, I'm already signed into my workbench, so I could go to my workbench and uh, choose one of the data sets I already have there, but I thought for those of you who might not already be familiar with uh, how to search for data and how to put together a data set uh, on Viper, I would go ahead and show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the protein data and grab a set of proteins um, I've decided to choose uh, ORF3A proteins from uh, all the South American countries that are available in uh, the Viper database. So I already have protein selected over here under data to return. Uh, I'm not going to touch anything in the taxonomy box because everything on the SARS-CoV-2 page belongs to the same group uh, or subgroup of viruses, SARS-CoV-2. Um, I'm not going to check complete genome. When I go to a uh, gene search type, I'm going to click on gene symbol and type my protein name, which is ORF3A. And then um, I'm not going to do anything in collection year since everything in SARS-CoV-2 for now is coming from 2020. And under geographic grouping, I'm just going to look for all sequences coming from uh, South America. And again, I'm going to leave the host and country as they are. Um, and so what the Viper website does is it shows you your results in near real time. So we see that we have about 31 different um, sequences from, uh, or SARS-CoV-2 sequences from South America. So that's a good amount to just run a quick uh, multiple sequence alignment for the purposes of a demo. So I'm going to go ahead and click search and uh, wait for that to come up. So this is our list of results. It shows you the gene symbol, the gene product name, uh, the GenBank accession number, if there is one, the uh, GenBank uh, protein accession, if there is one, and if there isn't one, uh, we assign one based on our Vigor4 annotation uh, program, the strain name, collection date, host, and the country it comes from. So there's some sequences from Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Peru, and Uruguay. So what's nice about um, the Viper website is that you don't have to uh, upload your own data or it's, it's meant to be seamlessly integrated so that you can run your analyses directly on uh, the data that you search. So if I go ahead and click all, select all 31 proteins, um, you can either save these as a working set or save your search or download these. But what's nice is that you can also directly run analyses on these um, results. So I'm going to show you how to align your sequences by clicking Align Sequences. And it'll ask you to select sequence type. Of course, these are amino acids, so I just click Continue. All right, so you can give your analysis a name. Let's say MSA, multiple sequence alignment for South America, 
uh, ORF 3A. And this just helps you keep track of the different things that you're doing. They're automatically saved into your workbench uh, for 24 hours. And after that, they're deleted unless you specify that you'd like to save them there. I'm going to click u Clust, which is an option to um, increase the speed and the quality of the alignment. Uh, and then you can choose several different options under uh, the visualization options. For the visualization format, you can choose either between using our own uh, multiple sequence alignment viewer or just seeing the results um, in, in an HTML page. And I'm going to show you how to use the MSA viewer, so we'll just leave that there. You can choose whether you'd like to sort your sequences. So I'll just click sort them by country. Um, you can choose which sequence you'd like to be your reference sequence if you have something that you um, you already have in mind. And uh, one of the nice things is that you can also change the sequence label. You can choose if you want the label to be the strain name or the accession number, or you can customize it um, based on, let's say, the date and the country so that it's kind of easier for you to see the patterns of differences. So I'm going to go ahead and click on accession name and country name so that I can see um, I can see the, the different sequences based on countries that they come from. And you just go ahead and click Run. So if this is um, a larger data set, it can take you, it might take you a little bit of time. So you can put in your email and then just request a notification for when it's done. But these sequences shouldn't take too long because it's not, not very many and it's quite short protein. Um, so here are our results, and you can see them in our multiple sequence alignment viewer. And you have several different options in how you can look at these. It's, you can see that there's not that much variation in the ORF3A proteins or in general in the SARS-CoV-2 genomes. So if you'd like to highlight where the differences are, you can just click on conserved versus reference which um, will kind of hide all of the conserved sequences as dots and just show you the um, any single nucleotide, any polymorphisms that you have in the sequences. So for example, over here at position 57, um, some of them are Qs and some of them are histidines. Um, and if you scroll along, then it's just easily highlighted. There's a lot of different options um, that you can choose in how you'd like to visualize these. If you'd like to change the order, you can um, uh, select these and choose to move them up or down, which is nice. Um, usually you have to download your sequence alignment to be able to do that um, in a separate program. You can filter out uh, any sequences that you don't want. Uh, you can hide uh, gaps, you can hide certain columns that you're not interested in. Um, you can search for specific motifs that you're interested in. You can choose to visualize or hide certain elements. For example, you can hide the label if you're not interested in looking at it. Um, you can um, uh, show other things, you can show gap weights, you can show conservation weights. And in sequences where there's a lot more variation, these are quite these are quite handy. You can change the color scheme if you'd like to do that. Uh, there's a couple different color schemes here, and I'd encourage you to look into all of the different ones. I'm not going to go through them all today in the interest of time, but one of my favorites is looking at um, hydrophobicity of the proteins. And this is really interesting, especially if you want to look at whether um, the variation creates might create any structural differences. For example, a change from um, a hydrophilic protein, which would be in blue, to a hydrophobic protein, which would be in red. Um, and there's a couple of different options that you can choose. Uh, you can export your alignment in multiple different ways. You can just download them as FASTA files. Um, or you can download them as gene feature files, or if you want, you can just uh, export it as a as a PNG, as a picture, if you want something for a publication or a presentation. 
If you go to download, you have a couple of different options as well. Uh, you can specify whether um, what kind of format you'd like to download them in. And um, there's quite a few options for this, which is uh, quite handy if, um, if you'd like to download them as uh, in a certain format for uh, some phylogenetic programs which only take um, certain formats as inputs. So moving on from that, I'm going to show you how to um, look at variation. And again, as I said, um, Viper aims to integrate all the different tools together. So you can take this alignment and go to Run Analysis and just click on Analyze Sequence Variation directly from here. So again, you can give your analysis a name, South America or 3A uh, SNP. It's already aligned and aligned FASTA files, so you don't need to change anything there. And you can just go ahead and click Run, and the results should be there in a few seconds. Again, if you have a larger alignment that's going to take some time, you have the option of just putting in your email. So this is what your results table looks like. On the left, you have the amino acid position, and so ORF3A goes from about 1 to about 275 amino acids. The next column shows you the consensus amino acid. Third column is the score. Fourth column is the alignment details. And um, the last column shows you the number of sequences with, um, with those in them. So for example, at position 57, which is uh, a known variable position in SARS-CoV-2, you get a score of uh, 20 of 71. And I should just mention that zero is the lowest score, meaning no variation. And um, I believe uh, scores um, around 200 are the highest possible variation. And if you're interested in uh, knowing how those are calculated, you can look at the documentation for this. But basically, um, this shows a little bit of variation and you can see that uh, 25 of these are glutamine and six are histidine. Um, and you could sort by uh, score if you're interested in looking at, or just looking at the most variable positions, which would be um, the position I just showed you, position 57, 251, 196, and 171. And this just gives you a summary of how many of these um, how many of these sequences had these different amino acids. Okay, so if there are no specific questions on this, um, then I'm going to move on to showing you how to use our Metacats tool. Um, so the Metacats tool is um, is a similar program in a way that it looks for variation in a group of sequences, but what's special about it is that it can do so based on um, how you group your sequences. So if you'd like to look at sequences from 2019 versus 2020 um, and how they've changed and what uh, sequence nucleotide polymorphism differences might be, um, might be there. For SARS-CoV-2, obviously, it's a little bit difficult to look over a year since it's only been um, it's only been around for a year. But uh, one of the things that people are interested in is looking at whether there are differences in um, in the strains coming out of different countries. So um, I already have uh, a group of sequences from nucleocapsid proteins from two different countries, from um, France and Turkey, and I'm going to use that to demo this. So I'm going to just uh, go ahead and click Analyze Sequences Saved in My Working Set. And obviously you can upload your own sequences or paste them in, or you can use a combination of your own sequences combined with those from the Viper database. So you just click on choose your working set and um, and I have a set of about 141 uh, nucleocapsid 
proteins from France and Turkey. And I'm going to select that. It asks you to confirm that these are amino acid sequences. Click yes. I'm going to select auto grouping and then I'm going to select sort by country. Um, you can choose the format of the sequences that are provided. These are unaligned FASTA sequences. And I'm going to just leave the p-value threshold as the default 0.05 and click continue. So you can see that um, it's been sorted into two different groups. Group 1 which has 85, group 2 which has 56. And you can add and remove any of these as you like. You might want to review them, but if you're content with the groupings the way they are, just go ahead and click run. So for, for these group, this group of sequences, these nucleocapsid proteins from France and Turkey, we have three positions that appear to uh, differ significantly, that is, or non-random uh, variations in the amino acid position. So there's 195, position 203, and position 204. And this is the p-value and the chi-square value. So you'll see that in uh, group one, in uh, the, the group of proteins that are from France, most of them have an arginine at this position, whereas in group two, it tends to be more va variable. It could be either an isoleucine or arginine. For the other positions, 203 and 204, it's a more of a significant difference. Um, so, Moving on to the last tool that I wanted to show you is identify the short peptides in the proteins. Um, one of the things that people are often interested in is looking for conserved motifs in proteins. And um, one of the, one of the well-known uh, proteins in um, SARS-CoV-2 is uh, the spike, and it's known to bind to the ACE2 receptor. So people are interested in looking at, um, you might be interested in looking at what, uh, whether there's conservation in these proteins, uh, whether there's, whether they might be found in other SARS-CoV-2 coronaviruses. So you can just put in um, this ACE2 binding motif in uh, SARS-CoV-2 and search for exact matches based on either a working set that you already have or, um, your own custom sequences. So what I'm going to do is see if I can find an exact match in a working set that I have of uh, bat beta coronavirus uh, spike proteins. And I'm going to go ahead and click run and see if I end up with any matches. So unfortunately, there are none, but what you can then do is go back there and switch to looking for a fuzzy match for this motif. And uh, another thing that you can also do is look for pattern matching so that if you know um, there are certain amino acids that are important for a binding domain or a cleavage site, you can uh, paste them in here putting in X for any random uh, amino acids and specifying the amino acids between brackets that you are interested in. So if I go ahead and click run, we should be able to find the fuzzy match in... So you can see that there are several that... Um, several matches that come up and one of them is this known bat coronavirus uh, strain, uh, the RATG13, which is one of the closest uh, related uh, coronavirus species to SARS-CoV-2, as well as some other more distantly related uh, viruses. So that can be quite useful if you're just interested in looking for a quick motif search. So that's it for the demo, and I apologize for any hiccups. Um, and I will take any questions you might have before we move on to uh, the tutorial. Okay, um, so the first exercise is to uh, align spike proteins of SARS-CoV-2 as well as uh, some related uh, 
coronavirus spike proteins uh, such as the RATG13 strain from bats, which is a related coronavirus, and uh, the original SARS coronavirus spike protein. So to do that, you just open your web browser, go to the Viper BRC, um, you can go to the SARS-CoV-2 page, and go to the tools that you're interested in under the Analyze and Visualize tab. From there, you can go to Align Sequences, and uh, we're going to upload uh, the sequences from the file I sent in the email. Okay, so this only has about five sequences in it, which is meant to um, just help speed up the analysis for you, but obviously you can run much larger data sets through this. We're going to use the UCLEST Fast Processing click uh, run and again you can save your analysis to your workbench where you can uh, where you can keep it um, private and save it for a later analysis so this is the multiple sequence alignment with the conserved versus reference view uh, you can change which one which sequence you want to be as the first sequence in the alignment I'm going to take this one, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 reference sequence, and move it to the top. And you can see that it's um, most closely related to the RIT G13 and somewhat less closely conserved uh, compared to the uh, SARS-CoV, um, the first SARS-CoV from the early 2000s, which is over here. And if you just scroll along this, you can see the differences. Again, um, there's a few differences in the spike protein between it and the bat protein. And here's just a couple other uh, SARS-CoV-2 proteins. Um, but you do see some differences, although it's surprisingly, it's surprising how related it is to the, to the bat spike protein. So, um, like I said, there's a lot of different options here, and I just encourage you to just go through all the different buttons and click through them uh, to see the different things, the different ways that you can uh, visualize it. And if you want to download it, again, you can just click on download, um, and you can specify the format that you want to download it in, which, again, comes in handy if you are tree building in any other programs. Um, you can also generate phylogenetic trees directly um, from, from this uh, alignment, based on this alignment, if you're happy with it, or, um, and that's something that we'll show you how to do in one of our future sessions. For the second exercise, we're going to also look at variation in the SARS-CoV-2 spike glycoproteins and for this we're going to put together our own data set. Um, so you're going to go to click on search data, go to protein data, and search for uh, spike proteins from Germany and China. So you would click on Go to search type, click on gene symbol, put in S for spike, um, and for country, you would put Germany, China. The host is obviously mainly people, so we'll just leave it there. And then because there's a lot of fragments um, in the database, I'm going to um, kind of streamline our data set by clicking on an advanced option to specify um, the minimum coding sequence length of the protein, which um, spike proteins are a little bit over uh, 3,000. Uh, so we're just going to specify 3,000 as the minimum coding sequence length and click on search. So we have 192 proteins over here. Um, so you can um, select all of these, add them to a working set so that you can have them saved for the next exercise. And 
uh, if you already have a workbench and if you already have a working set that you're interested in, you can just add them to that uh, iteratively, or you can create a new one with a name. Um, to set. And just click add to working set. So from here, you would go to Run Analysis, and um, we're going to click on um, Analyze uh, Sequence Variation. Click Continue, and it asks you to select the sequence type, and click Run. So I've already pre-computed these, so I can show you the results on my workbench. Here we go. Click view, your SNP analysis. So here we have a lot more sequences than we did in the first demo that I showed you. We have 192 sequences. And again, sorting by score really helps you just see the positions that are uh, the most variable in the, in the uh, protein. So position 614, which is obviously one of the most famous uh, SARS-CoV-2 spike mutations, and positions 254, 49, and 750. From this, you can either go ahead and download your analysis, or you can go ahead and visualize your aligned sequences. So I'm going to go back to uh, my workbench and back to the same data set. And run Metacats on it this time so that we can compare what SNPs are uh, different between uh, the, the spike proteins from Germany and the spike proteins from uh, China. So again, you just select all 192 proteins and um, go to Metadata Driven Comparative Analysis Tool. Click Continue. Specify Auto grouping based on the country. Um, these are unaligned FASTA sequences. Leave the p value threshold as is and click continue. It shows you your group of sequences based on uh, the different countries that they're from. So we have 117 uh, sequences coming from China and 75 sequences from Germany. And that's just summarized in this little table here. Um, you can choose to edit these sequences if there's something uh, that you know is not correct or a mutated sequence in there that you don't want. You can uh, still edit them at this stage. You can add or remove them. And you can just go ahead and click Run if you're happy with them. And we can see that we have two positions that um, differ significantly between the two groups so that we have in the group of spike protein sequences from China there are uh, 117 that have uh, an S at this position 254 whereas in group 2 this tends to be uh, more variable at position 614 uh, you have 114 of them that are D's three that are G's whereas in uh, in the second group of proteins, of European spike proteins, this is more variable over here. And this is confirmed by the, the chi-square pairwise comparison reports below. So for the final exercise, we're going to um, go to analyze and visualize and click on identify short peptides in proteins. So. It's known that in SARS-CoV-2, there's a unique difference in uh, the spike protein compared to its closest relatives in that it contains uh, something called a furin cleavage site. So we're going to look for that in, um, as an exact match, and we're going to search the sequences from the FASTA file that I sent you in the previous email. So you're going to click on Analyze My Custom Sequences, choose the file that we want, and 
click run. So this was the previous file that also contained the, the related uh, bat coronavirus, RITG13, and the original SARS-CoV genome, uh, as well as three other SARS coronavirus 2 genomes. So as expected, only these um, three SARS coronavirus 2 genomes com contained this furin cleavage site, but the bat coronavirus and the original SARS coronavirus uh, from the early 2000s did not. So again, it's an easy way to kind of look for these unique protein uh, motifs in your data set. So that's it for the tutorial. And if you guys have any suggestions for any other tools that you'd like to see, I would be more than happy to uh, hear from you. Thank you again for participating in this. And if you have any more questions, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us underneath uh, the support button on our website and we'll be more than happy to get in touch with you as soon as we can. Thank you again and we hope to see you at our next event.